Bro, your phone is done out, man. Man said, oh, yeah, I'm every day making chicken, bro. Yeah, every day. All I see your story is that you're making chicken. My boy got to eat, bro. That's all I eat. Man, I don't really do <laughs> grilled meat, but man, I don't really do this fried food. <laughs> bro, what is your timing, though? Can I just, can we just appreciate bro, your timing four minutes late? What do you mean, bro? I, I was there. If you look up, I am thought yeah. was actually, but I am DJ. Yeah, but it, it, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. It does, because I tried to request it. They want, want to request, so... Why is, the, why, why is it not requesting? Fuck no, he didn't give me the option, bro. Okay, it doesn't matter. You're here anyway. It don't matter. <laughs> live, direct. You, you, live, yeah, man. You, you, you bro. bro, how you been during quarantine? What you been doing, apart from cooking? Cooking, chefing, tanning, gymming. Tan? All right, bro, yeah. you look pale still. Wow. Why are you looking right? white? Look at your look at your right side of your cheek. It's pale, bro. No, that's the light. Light. No, 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 no. That's a light. Yeah. That's a, what are you doing to try photo? <laughs> See? It just got darker. I got I got dark. I got darker, bro. I'm I'm getting there. No, but you're naturally dark, bro. My I'm fucking pale as fuck, bro. For an Indian kid, I'm <laughs> pale as Word, what what is going on, man? You you're not the, I know you're not the typical Indian kid anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? Okay, well, I don't go. Hello, everybody. Okay, auntie, I'm everything good. But well, I don't work out a corner shop and that. <laughs> bro, it's good. It's because you're not a doctor, man. <laughs> wow. Hey, listen, bro, don't worry, man. Don't worry, my my family, my family, are like, what did you say? I got a bachelor's in science, bro. Jeez, are you? <laughs> what in what in what subject? What subject? Uh, quantum surveying. Okay, okay. So why, why? Okay, so why, why, why? <laughs> you're, you you're like, oh, this guy's actually smart as well. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why? <laughs> so why did you get to DJ then, bro? You know what it is. Um, it was like when I was like fourteen, fifteen is where it all started, and then yeah, lucky for me, lucky but not um, not so lucky. Like, my older sister went to. I <laughs> said my guy educated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, the stylus you're taking a bit, man. <laughs> I am in my story, bro. No, um, when you're 14, 15. <laughs> yeah, my sister was at uni at them times. So, mm -hmm. um, Giovanni Letford, you must have heard of him. Yeah. Yeah, so they, she was really good friends with him. So, he, he threw these pajama parties back at their uni. So, doing all these uni raves. Um, when I was like 16, 17, when I started learning how to use turntables and when you had to carry around your CD cases and all that bollocks. Yeah. Those are, he told my sister, um, I'll put him on at the age of like 16. And this is like yeah. a uni rave with the idea and that. And I was like, right, okay. So I spent a weekend there. I DJed at their closing party, so which was pretty sick. But back then, believe it or not, I was playing, bro, like dubstep, jungle and shit like that. So it wasn't So did you grow like up in like the dubstep kind of genres or were you more urban still or? Nah, it was I. It was weird. I went through a phase, so it was like dubstep, then dubstep jungle, that kind of scene, and then I let that go quickly. Then obviously, where Giovanni gave me an opportunity back then, he started doing house raves in London. So when yeah. I was when I was eighteen, I started playing house, so deep tech, minimal house, bare unsa 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 type of shit. Yeah. <laughs> then I was like, this life ain't for me. Like I can't be, I can't do none of that. Um, so. A friend of mine was like, why don't you just switch it up a little bit? My sister was always into old school R&B, old school hip hop, because she was at that, yeah. that, that era when she grew up, she was listening to that. So realistically, I said to myself, you know what? Fuck it. My sister, my sister taught me what that music was about because she always used to play it. So I thought, why don't I just put two and two together with my skills that I learned and then the music, and then I can play to an older crowd. So then that's where it, that's basically how it started, really and truly, bro. And then... <laughs> I'm taking a mick out your uns. Uns music, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to give a big shout out to Alexandra, Shivani. All, well, bro, the, way man's got, the way man's got the 11 out, you know, and this guy's flexing. <laughs> the guy, you know what, yeah? I might, like, we're having these discussions about wow. artist DJs, but, but we're having this discussion about artist DJs, but I'm looking at this guy, man's balling, driving a drop top. Uh, got the peng equipment. Like I'm thinking, I might need to get into this business now. <laughs> wow, man, man. Don't get, don't, don't, it's not even that. It's not even that, bro. It's um, 
I've been doing this and I've been I've been in and out of clubs for years and I I, I don't really do five hour sets, six hour sets, four hour sets. I'm people book me on an hourly basis, hour and a half, two hour basis, and yeah. realistically, you that's where that. it all. Yeah, it's it's not that I prefer it. It's I like to play a set type of music now when I get booked. Now these times, it's more so that when I do play the music that I like. I mm -hmm. want other people to have a chance to play. So if there's other DJs, if you're on the lineup, I want you to play the music. I don't want to be the one sitting there for five hours playing playing the same thing. And you know what? Some when you're doing some of these five hour sets, people want you to play strict. Um like strict, yeah, strict, strict yeah, yeah. Some of them say say that, oh yeah, you can't play fifty cent or you can't play drill, you can't play this. And I'm like and then you I remember one time I went to a booking with my friend. I wasn't actually booked, yeah. he was. He might even yeah, Bradley, BDJ years ago um he was doing a long long set in chomsford and before we even got there he, he got sent a list saying you have to play cheese you have to play this and i'm like how are you as a venue telling my man how to what, what to play like it's his mm -hmm. trade you're booking him it's what he's learned you know what i'm saying so i don't understand yeah. those venues because then how do you expect the how do you expect it to be packed how do you expect you know your bar to how do you expect the profit to be there in case, like, let's say someone that like, half the crowd is R and B, and you're telling them you can't play R and B. Well, what's the point in that? Yeah, what's the point in that? And if you're going to, if you're a regular at that place and you see that DJ there, don't you want to listen? To, you know what he's gonna play. Yeah. Or if you've known him before, especially if you're friends, imagine, for example, you might have 20, 30 people of your friends that want to go out, or friends, or friends, or friends, and they want to come and listen to you. All right, yeah. cool. They don't make a majority, but if they're the type of people that go to that venue in the first place, then the other people that go there that you don't know probably want to listen to the same thing. So I don't know, man. I I, I feel like there shouldn't be no restrictions. Do you do you take do you take do you do you, like because you got to your level now where you could probably just turn down that booking? Would you turn it down or would you take it still and change it up or? Um, I'll take it depending on how long the booking is. However, yeah. if I don't take it, I would always tell someone that I'm personally connected to. That I yeah. chat to on a regular basis, be like, yo, I've got this booking. If you want it, you can have it. I don't want nothing for it. I don't want the money. I don't care. If they say that, if they say they'll pay, they have to pay me or whatever, I'll give you all the fees. Like, for that, that, that doesn't really bother me. And you know what mm -hmm. it is? It's more about, it's not more about turning down booking. Sometimes it's just like, because of these restrictions, I don't want to do. Yeah, yeah. If I want to play, I'm not enjoying it. Like, I didn't get into doing what I'm doing. Because what's the point? It's your job as well. It's, that's yeah, your bro, job. Like, <laughs> I didn't get into doing this because of the money. Like, the money, money, like, mm. money will come. Like, money's not, like, for me, it's, I do it for the love and the passion. Obviously, there's people out there be like, I ain't taking no booking if it's not yeah. 500 pounds, 200 pounds, and it's not this and it's not that. Like, all right, all right, sorry, big bollocks. But, like, realistically, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but it's true. It's like, sorry, big bollocks. Like, are you doing this? For the for the for the money, or obviously you got a uh, uh, people are earning a living. I get that, cool. Yeah. But majority of the time, all the friends that I know that DJ, but do it for the passion and the love for the music. That, but that's the thing; it should be like that. It shouldn't just be for the like. Obviously, you got to do it as if it's your main job. You got to make sure the money's still there. You can't be doing it if the money ain't there. But no, if you're yeah. doing it, if you're doing it because you're jumping on the bandwagon because you're seeing people doing well. You know, then that's a different story. That's what I don't like about it. Like I've seen yeah, people that, just that, jump on it because that, they're seeing people around them like do well, and they're like, "Oh, let me just try DJing because I'm seeing you do this, I'm seeing you do that." Now, the worst is is like not a friend but an acquaintance that that wants to come. Is it acquaintance? No, like the outer of part of the circle. <laughs> yeah, like one of them. Ones. <laughs> but it's like, but you're cool with them. But no, it's like not in a rude way, but it's just like a hello and bye. And obviously, yeah. because you're cool, or they're in the industry, they come along and then come to a show, and then they then see what you're doing, and they're like, "Raw, oh, I can do this." Mm. And they're like, all right, cool, you can like, all right, cool, you can do it. But like, you're basically now you're hovering over me. You're trying to take like you come and you want to stand in the take notes like that. Ask me loads of questions. I will, I will, I will help you. Just ask me for the help. Don't be so shady about it. Like I ain't the greatest out there. Like mm. a bunch of my friends there are a very good DJ. Bro, your your Wi Fi is playing up, man. Yeah, your Wi Fi like, your Wi Fi is playing up, bro. My wi wow. Am I trying to diss my Wi Fi? 
Bro, Bro, it's moving mad. It's moving mad. <laughs> it's not me for once, you know. It's that actually not me. Is... I started this whole thing in the first two weeks. It was it's not me. me. I'm gonna... It's not me. It's you, bro. <laughs> Who, whose oh, is no. it? Whose is it? I so I so I'm putting in the comments. Whose is it? <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely you, bro. Nah, 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 nah. I've sorted it. I've sorted it. What are you trying to do with the camera? I'm so confused. What you're trying to do with this phone? <laughs> I said pay your bills, bro. You're spending it on the equipment. I said pay your bills. <laughs> Oh, don't so oh, I said so much. Oh, don't don't do it. Your Wi-Fi. Hey, Otisa, I always you... try to pay my bills, bro. I don't make enough money like you, man. Shit. <laughs> you know what? I said Somalian Wi-Fi. I can't take that. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm gonna die. Please pray. For... I'm gonna die. Please pray for me. I hey, don't listen, even know what's going, going on. All right, where's? Wait, I, where's your, can you like put a camera somewhere? Like, where, where am I seeing your help for? I'm, man's trying to read the comments, big man. Right, now I've got to pull out my other phone. I'm trying to read these comments. It's a better joke. Right, why don't you use the 11 for your, for the thing? And then, what, what are you using now? Your laptop or what? No, iPhone 7 Plus. This is why, you idiot. Fucking <laughs> move. Switch it. Switch it. Nah, because if I switch it, we're gonna, I'm, they're just going to lose completely. It's cool. It's like... Okay, fine, fine. Leave it like that. Leave it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, bro. You know what? You might need to switch it. I can't lie to you. you might need to switch it. <laughs> Go on, switch it. Everyone, join back in there. Let me switch it quick. Alright, switch it, switch it, switch it. Well, I don't yeah, know what yeah. you're trying to do with this camera movement. <laughs> right, I'll, 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 like, add yourself back in. Switch it. Oh my, oh my God. <laughs> Wait. Alright, what is going on here? This guy was moving. This guy's moving mad. <laughs> right, right. Let's get him back. Let's get him back. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 yo. I'm so dead. <laughs> yeah, it's better now. Oh, I'm busy, innit, man? I'm trying to do 10 things at once. <laughs> well, you talking about 10 things at once? It's flipping quarantine. What are you trying to do, man? Man, I'm just out here, man. Just putting in some work and other shit. That little Wi Fi, man. Like... <laughs> man, it's the bad people are taking a piss. Little Wi Fi. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm... How, are you, how are you, like, with an iPhone 11 and the Wi Fi is moving like that? Bro, why are you trying to diss my thing? It's quarantine, man. Virgin been having problems. Virgin <laughs> Right. <laughs> so, what was your first clubbing gig? Like, how did how did that all start? What was that, Broski? I said, what was your what was your first clubbing gig? Clubbing gig. Um, yeah, that was the one that Giovanni put me on. But then it went on to like for what hip hop? What, what for like urban? Scene? Like yeah, urban yeah, urban urban. Right, if we're talking like urban scene, then how am I? a right, uni. <laughs> yeah. Uni must have been my first actual, um, basically, I went to uni, I got booked for a charity event in Essex, so I went to uni in Essex, and I got booked for a charity event from the African, like, the African Caribbean Society, yeah. and um, there was uh, another bar, I don't know if anyone has heard of it in Chelmsford, it's called Citizen. Yeah, yeah, Citizen, yeah. Yeah, so... There was a guy that was in there who just happened to come along. It was a random, it was some, just some random white dude. And then at the end of the show, he must have come up to me. It was like, yo, what are you doing after? This was like, bear in mind, it's like 2.33 o'clock now. Mm. And I said to him, nothing. He goes, come with me. And he goes, come with me. I was like, bro, firstly, who are you? What do you do? He was like, ah, oh, I manage a bar, red, 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 whatever. But then he took me to, he took me to Citizen, like some after party. There was only, there was like a couple of owners there and whatnot. So we sat there just discussing stuff. And I told him what I was about. I tried to do what I, but obviously they looked at a brown kid in Essex yeah. playing urban music. For them, it didn't really fit. So then, then it just happened to be that my uni did their student events there. Yeah. And being a white predominant, it was house. And Essex was white, like 
predominantly there. So it was like, cool, what do, what do the urban scene do? What do the brown people do? What do the black people do? And that, <laughs> what do the what, brown people do? Like, <laughs> and, and, like what, not, not taking the piss. Like, bro, I've got, yeah, videos, yeah. I've got videos from back then that I've never posted that I went to one Wednesday and it was so rammed with so many people because it must have been the launch of the new student night. Yeah. They said, I went to the bar manager. He was like, ah, oh, as a joke, he was like, ah, oh, you don't have any DJ stuff on you, do you? Like, you know, brush of the shoulder. And I was like, funny enough, I do. It's in my mate's car just downstairs. Mm. And he goes, we're shocked. And he goes, I go, if you want, I go get it. Got it. Shut down the show. I, I, I wish I had the videos from the actual footage. I've only got, yeah, yeah. like, from back then. But um, then he offered me every Wednesday. So for the following two, three years of my uni life, I was doing every Wednesday for the students. Then I got booked at, then I got booked at the MTV tent for okay. like some stuff like that. So that was probably, I'd say, my first urban type of scene. So do you think the uni scene is popping like in the UK? Do you think that's like the scene that's probably going to keep going instead of clubbing? Bro, uni, you like uni, big bro like some of my best friends run the biggest events like like, like martin does for milkshake yeah yeah so they do, they do x or y or fabric um and some and saucy on a friday and bro and i tell you i haven't seen so many like the thing is it, it's not a club these are raves like yeah, yeah. hip-hop urban pure like pure drill pure hip-hop pure bashment dance or for for students and it's sick because <clears throat> You can't get that kind of crowd in huge numbers at a normal club. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, it's a bit scatty because <laughs> there were a few. <laughs> but it's because it's so many people, it's like, you, uh, ask Denzel. Denzel knows. I've covered a couple of slots of Denzel. Denzel goes in on a Friday, yeah? Yeah. You ask him. He's a big student DJ as well. Yeah, I know. I've seen, like, so... A lot of DJs say Ministry is the best club they DJ that if they have DJ there. Is that would you put that as your best club you've DJed in? Well, best club of all time. Yeah. That you well, DJed in. Fucking hell. Um Probably uh, nah, I don't know, man. Uh Nah. In what sense though? What? Because it's around everyone. <laughs> Uh, crowds, set, anything. Like, I, I, I don't know, I went there. Like, what's, what's been the best I, venue for you? Oh, man. I played Ministry once. Because then, yeah. then, then I died, so I actually played for an hour. That was lit. Like, don't get me wrong, that was, that was hard. But, um, but what, what's, what's, the, what's, come on, you got, you must have a club where you prefer. You know what, nah, man, different experiences each and every time, bro. Yeah, yeah. Different experiences each night. I don't Des goes PJ does arenas. <laughs> best best arena. O2. <laughs> O2. That was that was that was <clears throat> tough still. Yeah, yeah. How was that? Mind blowing, bro. Were you, you, know, like, were you like, bare nervous? Not yes and no, but not really. Cause I knew I knew the pattern. <clears throat> knew yeah, what yeah. I, had, I knew the only nervous bit is if something fucks up. Technically. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we're using technology. It's happened to me enough times. At the end of the day, we're using technology. So if something... It's always going it, to happen if, if it does happen. It can happen anywhere. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, they might just not want to connect to your laptop. <laughs> yeah. So, and I've had that. But then obviously, I have a spare USB, try troubleshooting and whatnot, but... Yeah, no, that experience was something else, man. That was mind blowing. So, hey, what did you? First thing is that wasn't even my show. <laughs> and you know, the set that I played, it was yeah. so the set that I played. Um, that you see me put up on, on the gram, bro. That was unplanned. That like, I was not booked to play that set. There was another DJ playing. Audrey, I can't remember who it was. I'm not gonna put put them out there, but I played two days before. Yeah, in Manchester. The same for the same for the same Starbucks there, so I opened up for Smalls when I was there. And Eddie Cuddy must have seen he, he liked the vibe, we were bouncing back off of each other. So he saw me again at the O2 and then he goes, Yo, jump on. I was like, I'm not booked to play, bro. Like pff, it's not my it's not my like I don't like stepping on people's toes. I don't like, like I'm not even I'm like this is a bit of a side note, I'm not even the type of person if someone's running over my own set time, I'll 
tell them nicely, but... Uh, <laughs> you don't tell them nicely, you're probably like, bro, this is my set. Nah, I'm not that guy, though. Uh-huh, okay. Over there, yeah, there are people there, out there, yeah? Yeah. That, like, yo, bro. <clears throat> <laughs> up up and personal, bro. Why is so up and personal? <laughs> exactly, for real. You're all up in my space. Just tell me nicely. Be like, all right, bro, by the way, you've gone over your time. Right to yeah, yeah. Move along. I'm like, all right, cool. They're about, but I'm not that type of person, bro. Everyone wants, everyone wants the time to shine in it. Definitely. So how did you get involved with Nape Smalls? Like, how did that all start? Yeah, you know what? I, big big love to my... It was actually my neighbour, one of my boys. He happens to be my neighbour. Okay. Uh, part of his management team. Uh, last year, February times, <clears throat> I got invited to a Tottenham game. Yeah, this was this is this is where I was randomly at a Tottenham game. Really shit service there. Yeah. yeah. Sitting there on the ground, and then I get a phone call. Bear in mind, there's loads of people trying to make noise, and I'm trying to take this phone call. And he was like, "Yo, Smalls is looking for a new DJ. Um, he he's got a potential booking in Leicester." Are you free on there, 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 there on this date? And I couldn't hear it. It was really, it was breaking up. So I was like, yeah, what? Huh? Yeah, what? What? Nate, what? Yeah, what? And then <laughs> he was like, and then obviously he was probably doing, he was probably communicating whilst he was in the office. Yeah, yeah. He was like, let me call you back. <clears throat> call me back. He called me back. Couldn't get through to me. I got loads of messages saying, voicemail, voicemail, voicemail. And then he pushed me, he pushed, he literally pushed me forward. Um, and then ever since then, bro, after that day, he goes, look, if you smash Leicester, then we'll, we'll just, we'll just keep you on. And clearly I must have done half a decent job, but... Half a decent, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? It's not only, it's not only that, yeah, it's, um, it comes, it comes with a friendship. If you have a connection with the right person... Yeah. You can, you can be, you can be a DJ for someone, but if you ain't got, you know what, saying that, B. Polly, who just locked in, yeah? Mm. Uh, he's an up-and-coming artist, yeah? Yeah. And I went... I didn't charge him nothing. Everything was out of love. He had some small shows here and there. And he wasn't... An, we randomly just connected and we just vibed with each other. So that's how I got that. And it's the same yeah. now. I managed to actually be friends with him. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not only him, but his team... All of his friends from back home that come to his shows, we have a good... Like, we've been away with each other, obviously, on tour and stuff like that, and some of his boys have come along. And it's, if you can build the, the family, that and then that's what Ozone's about. The whole of the Ozone family is a family, bro. It's yeah. no one's stepping on no one's toes. Everyone likes to work together and try to come with the best outcome. And I just have... I have my place. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm going to ask you this. I don't know if you'll answer it, but... Do you prefer the new Nate Smalls, so like the past year and a half, or like the older, early 2016, 17? Bro, both, man. I fuck with both. Like, if you hear some of these old mixtapes that I didn't even know that were out, yeah. he was showing the car one time, like last year at some point. And, bro, like his music, like, <clears> comes <throat> deep, bro, like, it, it, with meaning, and it's real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now... Obviously, time's changed. Every, uh, every everything's gonna change within time. But he still has that passion in his music. Mm. So for me, both, bro. If I if I spin his old shit, like for example, stuff like digits. Yeah. Banger. You drop. People know that. Even bro, we even perform his fire in the booth sometimes when we're, mm. when, we're, when we're out and about, and it's it's wild, bro. It's actually wild to see. For me, not for him, it's different. For me, it's like raw. There are so many people out there that listen to my man. Yeah. You get me? So how is it kind of having to your name that you're an official DJ, an artist DJ, right? Because, like, obviously a lot of DJs kind of say, oh, no, I don't want to do that, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I personally, for me, I, if I was going to do it, I want to build up my brand. But do you think you build it up to the point where you could actually do it? Or do you think it just depends on the artist who you get? Depends, bro. Depends on, you know what it is? Depends on the person that you are. <clears throat> Like, to be fair, I don't have to have official DJ for Nate Smalls on there. Yeah. That's that's a personal thing for me. And, yeah, it it, it helps. It, do you know what? It, it helps me mm -hmm. grow. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As well as 
as well as all right, cool, you get give it's a title that you gain because obviously you're someone's DJ. It's just like any it's like any DJ that is a tour DJ for someone. Mm. So realistically, nah, bro, for me it's just it's a personal thing. It's nothing I think if people are someone's DJ, bro, like take that on board. Like represent represent on who you are as your yeah. brand and represent the person because at the end of the day, you're gonna be in all the footage. You're mm. gonna be in all, all all the pictures, all the visual. So you're going to be doing all the shows and festivals and all exactly. that. You're, when you're on stage, it's it's not John from down the road that's going to be there. So, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Or on the you're on the stage, you and the artist, mm. and that is that that is your artist's stage. And with that, if you don't press play or if you don't do stuff correctly, then <laughs> then it's your fault. And it's kind of fucked. <laughs> so. Always remember, if you're going to use the official brand, just come correct. Don't get me wrong, bro. I've I've had my fair share of fuck ups and whatnot, and I've learned from my mistakes. Not everyone's yeah. perfect, in it. but um, I've I've learned I've learned from those. So for me to say I'm an official DJ for someone is, I think if anyone can do it, bro, just I think you should use it. No do you think you um, do you think it helps a lot with getting more gigs, or do you think you've actually got less gigs because of it, or more in terms of your skills developed and stuff like that, or? more exposure bro you just get a lot it's not getting more gigs people notice you a bit more yeah and obviously i've made from being his dj don't get me wrong i've had the chances of playing places that i would never have played before i've been booked by brands that wouldn't book me if i was just not not a nobody like my like my own brand my i am pj brand is a good is a solid enough brand for me to yeah. be like to any before any of this, like I did, I did a lessy back way back a couple of years ago. So I built in. I think I built my brand enough to be like, all right, cool. I can do this on my own, or you can book me <clears> with this. <throat> the fee ain't change. The fee's gonna stay the same. Yeah. Obviously, I, there are prom there are promoters out there that will book you because they feel like there are there there might be that one percent that Nath might roll through. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say as well. Like. Do they do they book you as well because they think oh you're gonna bring Nath with you or he... there are definitely loads of promoters out there that will try and book you and and not pay for Nath but uh, yeah, pay for you uh, yeah. they're like oh is, do you know if Smalls is coming it's like what <laughs> <laughs> you know what it's so, stuff like that is 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 funny though because I'm like just because they're the DJ doesn't mean necessarily they're going to turn up and do a show. Don't get me, like, yeah. Don't get me wrong, bro. It's, if it was a banging A1 show... Yeah, if I, it was, like, some proper I, show... I knew it was a pattern for everyone that I knew, then, yeah, I would, I would, I would ask the whole of the Ozone team, be like, yo, you might want to roll through? Or, yeah. No, times out of 10, bro, I don't even roll to any of my shows 10-man, 20-man deep. But I drive... You know what? I, you know what? Even, I even drive to all my shows now. Oh, yeah, yeah. I drive to all my shows, so realistically, maybe one or two people will come with me, and that's mm. about it. I don't really, yeah, I don't really guys go to in with the old guest list. Yeah, if people want to come or friends or friends, if you've hit me up and you know I'm playing, that's different. But for me personally, my own car is me, me or one other person. Really and truly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your take on like the clubbing scene at the moment? Do you think it's dying out? Or do you think it's like there's because like there's a lot of events coming in now? Do you think it's more just event event packed kind of thing? Or uh, clubbing's always going to be there. Someone always wants to shake a leg or two. Um, me personally, everyone around me, like a fair few people, don't really want to hook up no more. Mm. Not for them. It's not their type of thing no more. Yeah. Once in a while, yeah, of course, like, people, like, I don't, to be fair, I don't want to go to a club. And that's weird, because I'm always in a club. I think because all, you're kind of, like, it's, I think every DJ can agree with this. Once you kind of get the hospitality of going to a club, DJ and getting a free drink and blah, 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 you don't actually want to go there and spend the money on the, on the alcohol and stuff like that. You know what, bro? I don't even, all that. I don't really mind, bro. If you if you're my boy, or if you're my peoples, and if I can get it, if I can get access to it, I'll give it. Yeah, yeah. But me on the basis of that, do you get me? 
Yeah, yeah, of course. If you want to come, and if I say to you, yo, come, don't worry, your pattern, all right, cool, then it's fine. Do you know what I mean? But don't come on the premise that, oh, yeah, I'm... You're going to pattern it. Yeah, 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 no, I am definitely going to pattern it. That's not... Oh, you should always come correct. And I learned... Don't get me wrong, I learned the hard way, man. Like, I was patterning left, right people that I didn't even know really and truly. But... Well, they just took advantage. <clears throat> advantage, but, like, obviously, I, it got to a point when... It was quick for me to realise. I was like, right, okay, you're only coming now because you think you can get the pattern. Yeah. When the pattern, they were like, oh, you're a snake. I was like, bro, how am I the snake? <laughs> you know, like, What's you're a snake? That turned out to be the snake. But, um, nah, nine times out of ten, people actually come just yeah. love, really and truly. Like, I do the same thing. It's like, if I know, if I can get to a show and someone's playing there and I will just roll just for the sake of rolling. Mm. Like, how do you how do you kind of find it? Like obviously once you once you're being Nave Small's DJ, like how do you find it? Kind of being alongside all these other big artists, do you kind of do you get a little fanboy moment a bit? Like oh my god, that's whoever, or do you just go yeah, cool? Nah, not really, bro. Not really. <laughs> I've learned to try, <laughs> I've learned to try to keep it humble. <laughs> you have to stay humble. That's the thing, though, because like, oh my days. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, is that you? Oh my god! <laughs> and what if it is the fact that it's not like it's different, you know? I I I see it. It's like when you see people on YouTube and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like when, who did be? It was funny. It was like one. There was one more where I went when we went Copenhagen last year. Yeah. Uh, you know that bricker bricker guy. I forgot his actual name. He's now <clears throat> fuck. What's his name? Anyway, back in the day, he used to do some funny videos. Uh-huh. And then he was there, innit? I was like, right, this is Bricka Bricka, but I didn't want to be rude, innit? I got to call him by something else, but it was, it's different. It's like I've been in rooms with loads of people and I've been around. Yeah. They're, 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 they are there for the same reasons you're there. Yeah. They're there with their people enjoying themselves. I'm there with my people enjoying themselves. And it just happens that everyone just knows each other. And the good thing about it is, is that everyone's respectful. Like, if they... They will say they will say hello to you. They will say hello, and <clears throat> you just gotta keep it moving. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Obviously, what's the, what, what's the biggest festival you've done? Hmm? What's the biggest festival festival you've done? Uh, what, how many what festival? You know what? It's really sad. Man said how many? Man said how many? <laughs> you nah, nah. can't remember. No, no, no. Um, it's quite sad because this year. <clears throat> We're meant to be at wireless, so yeah, that was an epic one for me. But um, yeah, but that's probably gonna go to next year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should hopefully. Oh, I mean that's that's a bit snaky if they take you off the lineup. <laughs> that's a bit snaky there. You know what um, I mean? There was a festival in Bristol. I forgot the the name. Boggles me. Oh, it was last year. What was the name? It's the one oh, that yeah, that what that was a highlight. That was the best one. My page. The one on your page. Yeah, I literally just put it up on my page. Well, let me. <clears throat> Did you actually type the name up? No, I forgot the name. Oh, I I know I've seen. Oh, I just watched that, but like I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what the name is. You haven't tagged it. I can't remember the name, but that festival was. <laughs> that festival. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. It looks good. That that festival was crazy. That and Charlie Sloss, Charlie Sloss one, Fire in the Park. Yeah, yeah. That one was cold too. How many hours do you like guys practice together doing the sets? Like, is it is it bare or is it like nothing? Bro, I tell you, God's honest truth. From the day that I met him, don't get me wrong, we we should like back there now. We should, but before he set, like if it's on tour and stuff like that, if it's like a club, we do sound check. Yeah, that's about it. So but you wouldn't rehearse like going through the songs or even like for any of his personal any any of his personal tours and stuff like that yeah for <clears> sure <throat> damn like for sure we'll definitely it was just where it was time constraint last on his first tour that we that yeah. we did up around the country uh, we actually didn't get a chance to rehearse okay so um was that it was that bad or was was it all right it was sound checked you see what i mean Mm. Uh, we still the sound check's long enough for us 
to go through that at that time was was long enough for us to go through all the list of songs that he wanted to go through and yeah to get an idea of how he wanted it to go this the what's, your, is, what's your favorite Nave, uh Nave song well at the moment well that he's ever that he's ever put out well that's difficult bro i'll give you two i'll give you two it's fire in the it's fire in the booth yeah and fuck man I kind of fuck I can't, some unreleased stuff I like smoking oh is that your favourite song with Chip that is one of my yeah that's when I first started listening to uh, Nath that when that song got came out when was that was that 2017 16 17 16? 16 or 17, one of them ones. Yeah, that's uh, what right I first now, started listening to. Right now, especially with the weather, it's it's probably Ocean Deep mm. off his off his new off his yeah, new yeah, album. Yeah. That, that that's got so that's got some revive. When I first heard it, I was like, right, this is gonna chart for sure. Like this is that like, was cold. <clears throat> Does he ever kind of get like talk to you and be like, bro, I'm not sure if I should release this one or or are you kind of out of that picture in that sense of in terms yeah. of what he puts out I've been obviously I've been in the studio with him working on yeah. stuff I will say yeah this sounds hard and stuff like that but yeah I don't really get involved in too much on that side of things have you wanted to produce a song for him if I could produce bro <laughs> <laughs> get into it bro it's quarantine we've got time we've got time if I could produce um, you know what it is my boy he was in it, it was in the early um, Sammy uh, he started producing like yeah. he's been for years been taken a bit more seriously during quarantine and I'm le- I'm slightly learning off of him like he may- at the moment he's making more drilly type of beats and stuff like that mm-hmm. but I'd love to get him to produce him bro what's your take on the UK music scene at the moment crazy I- I'm from the UK but I- I'm from London bro so I when I play music I don't really play like anything from the US, really and truly. Yeah. You can ask anyone that comes to any of my. But what, okay, I, I'm gonna ask you this: Why is it that the US are dominating? I just, they're, they're a bigger country, bro. Don't uh, matter. It doesn't matter if they're like if you look at, but even if you look at it, Spanish music is still dominating as well. Like, each, I, I can't even answer that, bro. I, I really don't know. <laughs> people, That's, some people have said, some people have said because of like the mastering and mixing of the tracks or oh. different sounds. That's not even nah. That's that can't even be a reason, bro. It, mm, mm. <clears throat> but do you think do you think everyone's kind of doing the same sound though in the UK, or not? No, not really. Everyone's got their little bit to each to their own. Yeah, there might be artists out there doing the same thing, but everyone's got their own little twang to it. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? So, alright, yeah, like back. What, what, a couple of years ago, it all started when everyone said that the Afro wave scene was the same, but now everyone just had their own twang to it. Mm. So, do you think? Do you think that kind of died off, or do you think it's gonna come back? What Afro wave? Yeah, yeah. Well, I bang Afro wave to this day. No, no, no. But as in, like, that was kind of like a year and a half, two years ago. Now the drill's coming back, and do you not? Do you not? What do you think? It's just gonna keep changing up every every now and then. Personally, not like you know what with weather like this, you don't really want to be listening to drill. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, like I'd rather listen. Like I listen to drill now and again. Like I personally don't even listen to a lot of drill. Yeah. I'd rather if it's weather like this, I like uh, something a bit more upbeat. Do you get what I mean? Like something mm. you can bop, bop your head to and vibe to. Not fucking being very aggressive twenty four seven. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> what what um, DJs do you look up to in the scene? Has that kind of changed for you when you started DJing, or has it kind of stayed the same for you? I don't I don't really like using the term "look up to." Okay, well, that's... inspire. I don't know what what you kind of. Uh, you know, I, it, yeah, you know what? There are what personal friends of mine, or like people that I've met. And what actually... anyone who you kind of look to as a DJ, like who's a good DJ, or any any what I personally. Um, mm-hmm. A couple of my friends, so G Star, definitely, yeah. he's cold with it. Um, well, everyone knows Martin, 
Um, like I love, I love like the way that Martin communicates with everyone, the way that he deals with deals with shit when he's working and stuff. He's cold. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's cold with it. He's he, he's too. He, yeah, he's different with it. Um, couple of yeah, yeah, quite a few man. Like a couple of the people here, triple four. He's cool with it. Um, Arians, he's like. There are people out there who are like I, I said. I said I didn't to you, get that. Bro, my series talking to me. Um, <laughs> that would be like I would like to learn some of the things that them not do in their mm. own. Day, do you get what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've got my now. When I'm playing out, my my sets are, can you will never know what's coming. That's I will never play. Try not to play the same <clears> set <throat> every, every gun. But I don't scratch. Yeah. Everyone that I've mentioned just then scratches. Mm -hmm. That would be something that I would like to learn. And stuff like that, and I know, like Cable, DJ Cable, yeah. like he's he's right now he's doing what he's doing some um, free scratching stuff online and stuff like that. If you want to donate to him and whatnot, and I'd like to learn how to scratch, but then that's that's a personal thing. Not saying yeah. that I want to come out of club because I know that's not what the people want to hear. Mm, mm. I mean, the thing is, if you can do it tight, like if you've got a good routine. And then it works in a clubbing environment, then obviously by all means do it. But I don't agree with, like, well, not even agree with. It's just like sometimes I've seen some DJs try and do it in the club, and they can't. They don't go with like it's. It's not like it's not like it's um messed up, but it just don't go, and like it just like, no one can really dance to it. Just in a routine, uh, I've got a, I've got a few routines that I personally do because I know yeah. they. Then if you know they're not gonna work, don't do it. <laughs> like, don't try it up first, that's the worst place you should do it. Do you get what I mean? The best place for Definitely. you to do it. At home, fiddling about, messing around, record it so mm. you can listen back all the time. And then you can always go back. Obviously, everyone in this game is a perfectionist. They're like, ah, oh, shit, it's, it doesn't sound right. So, yeah. like even. Bro, even when I'm doing my mixes, yeah, I know some of them don't sound great. I know some of the things that don't sound great, but where it's, you have to go back and it's impossible to get out. Yeah. Um, it's, it's that, that element of trying to be a perfectionist. And for me, I don't care about the public. I care about other DJs that I know that notice it. That's, that's what, that's Yeah, what I, I care about my, the other DJs. If they're like, if they want to take me on board. Oh, <clears throat> That's the bad way to think because yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't mean like, oh, I need to know if you're gonna like the mix. I'm just thinking like, no, no, no. if if I fuck, if I if I do something wrong, that guy there, he's gonna notice. Or that yeah. girl, yeah. This whole DJ scene is gonna notice it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, in your opinion, what makes a good DJ then? Um, knowing your sounds, bro. Um, knowing what suits you as a person. And reflects the way that you are. That like if you're not, if you're not, uh, for example, I, I mean, if you're not about listening to drill, for example, don't go out there and start playing drill. Mm. Know what you don't know, <clears throat> that, you don't know that music. Know stuff that you know what how what is that stuff that you listen to. Obviously, you can yeah. experiment. Uh, but yeah, no, know what you know, like play what you know. Don't, yeah, that's what I do. Like I know. Afrobeats. I know Afrowave. I know dancehall. I know bashment. Yeah. I don't really go out there and play trap music because I don't. Do really... You play um Bungra and all of that, or you nah. kind of stayed away from that. Nah. None of your historical culture. <laughs> <laughs> I am... Bro, even I play Bungra, man. Come on, like. <laughs> honestly, honestly speaking, it's not that I don't want to play it or, or, or whatever that is. It's, yeah. It's it's not me. That's not who that's. <clears throat> I can play it. Yeah. If you want me, I will play it. If that's what you want, I'll play it. But... Uh, you got to do it. You got to do a mix now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear a Bungra mix. 20 minutes. <laughs> no, that is, it's not me. That's not the right. Unfortunately, yeah. Like, yeah. My mum would. Are you not, why can't you do a nice Hindi mix for me? And all this about that. Like, <laughs> That's not me, man. Unfortunately, what it, what advice would you give to up and coming DJs trying to get into the clubs, trying to get out there? Hit up all your friends that have that have done it, and work as a team. 
Yeah. Like anyone, I'm to this day. I'm always asking people, "Yo, do you know how to do this?" Like the other day, it's like the Serato record box thing, bro. I've used record box for for syncing my USBs because I was yeah. a backup. But I've solely been on Serato because I've asked friends, "What do you use? What do you think will suit me?" Mm. You don't ask questions, you're never gonna know, and you're never true, gonna true, learn. True. Like, yeah, I, if you don't I, ask, you don't get. Like, I'm gonna be teaching one person after this quarantine's over um, the basics because she wants to get into it, which is fine because yeah. she's that's what she wants to do. Cool. And I've taught, I've taught to one of my friends, um, Flo. She wanted to learn how to do it, and she asked me questions like, "What controller do I buy?" or "What's the difference between this and this?" If you don't, if you don't ask and where you want to be and especially if you you know when you know that the person wants to do it because they really just they just want to do it uh, yeah that person that i'm going to be teaching after after all of this is over i will help them get into a club because what's the point of helping someone and then not helping them get and then not helping them get anywhere else help, help any, any, any of them play anywhere do you know what i'm saying yeah. anyway, shout out my homie nads though she's cool with it too still she, she trust me Female DJs is another thing in this game, man. Female DJs. Do you think we couple. need more? Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I know a fair few. But That's do you think fair. we need more in the clubbing industry? Because yeah. I know I know loads that DJ for like the rooftop bars and stuff like that, but not in the that, actual clubs. For example, the person I was teaching, Flo, was... Um, wants to play in clubs like she has connections abroad yeah. so like in Dubai and stuff like that um she's a she's a she's an artist as well um the Alex who I'm teaching at that soon because she she wants to I'm gonna help her get into clubs yeah Nads right in, Nads who's in here right now fam she's already in the clubs she's killing shows like you go to one of her shows, you know you're going to have a good time. She's one of my homies mm. still, man. Big shout out to her still. You know what? There's some really good female DJs out there. Like, there's a lot of people out there. Um, but it's just that they need, yeah, what Den said, they, they're being slept on. Like, there's a lot of, like, I mean, I know Soraya, she's DJing and tapes. She tapes main DJ. So yeah, yeah. I know she's doing her thing there. But there's a lot of DJs that I can That's name who. All the, all the um, well, soup, like, what are they called? I wrote the Bells Girls. They. The what? Hey, G Star, help me out here. What are they called, man? G Star's in this chat. I can't remember what they're called, but there's a group of female, female DJs out there like Sandra Mari, and she, she's called she's called with it as well. I yeah, dance, yeah. I, I dance all sets of levels. But hey, it's just like getting them into the clubs. That's the thing. But <clears throat> it's getting also the up and coming DJs in the clubs as well. No, like hey, there are a lot of female DJs out there in clubs right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, there, 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 there's one. Like, hey. <laughs> he means hello, but all right, hello. <laughs> Funny. And these are all people that I've met. Well, okay. I've met these people uh, through G Star, but um. Yeah, yeah, pineapples, yeah. So they're there, man. They're in the clubs, and they're doing good events. They're not like doing shit events. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, I think it'll be good to get more because obviously it's a male dominated game in that sense I, I you know what when you look back on old DJ videos and championships and I don't know you never see females back then so I think that's just the type of persona <clears throat> that off. but obviously where we are now who's on your DJ all-star lineup wow <laughs> alright cool me 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 <laughs> ah, thank you uh, Not even yourself. You can't put yourself in. I don't even know, man. Shit, that's difficult still. Uh, five, five. We'll give five. What, of people that I know, yeah? Or Why does it have to be you know? Like, just uh, anyone. <laughs> ah, man. I can say the greatest DJs in the world, innit? Like, I can name them, but... Yeah. At least... If okay, I you know. Okay, you know. You know. The people you know. That way it's more possible. <laughs> Okay, the up. people you know, the people you know. Uh, G Star's definitely got to be on that. For for the fact that he's he's been with me, helping me for for don for, from get go when I've been in the short like shortage scene, for example. Yeah. Uh, cable, 
DJ Cable's got to be on there. Uh, who else is there? How many is that? That's two. That's two. Can you not count? Uh, who else, man? Shit. You go down my phone book. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Someone that doesn't actually play no more. It doesn't like it. Some guy called Blairy on decks. Okay. I can see. <clears throat> Um, Martin. Yeah. One more. I like him as a person, and he's and like I love how he elevated since. Oh, when I locked into his last one. It, yeah, yeah, called. yeah. Last one, and it can't be me. Um, <laughs> fuck, man! I this you put me on the spot. I need to go down my phone book. <laughs> this guy. Uh, How can you not know five off the top of your head? Uh, Jammer Beats. Jammer Beats, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jammer Beats. Right. There that's, are... a, that's an all-star lineup there. What, what, cities, what cities do you want to DJ in after quarantine? Oh, shit. Like yourself, without Nath, without Nath. Not in the UK. Yeah, where, yeah whereabouts... Miami, Miami for sure. Um, where else in the state? So, somewhere like a couple of places in the states. Mm. Um, <clears throat> have you wanted to do a like go overseas and live there for a season? Do a whole you know season what? out there. Actually, talking to someone saying, let me just let, let's go over there for a month. Yeah, and just plot up there for a month and see what happens. It just like I'm not gonna I'm not going there for work or nothing just to see, see what, what happens. happens. Just anything. Like go out there, put myself out there saying I'm this person, that person, whatever. Give me a shot. <clears throat> Let's do that. Alright, cool, I'll be back. Mm. Come What's your take on the uh, West End clubbing scene? West End. <clears throat> like do you th okay, so do you think obviously now that I, th I personally, I think every most clubs are going to go to this now, which is like the bottle spends, the tables, and all of that because they're going to need the revenue. But do you think that's just going to be a thing anyway that most clubs are going to that and not just for the love of music and passion of music? When people go to clubs in the West End to spend, they're not going there for the love of the music, bro. They're... Yeah, yeah, but I'm just talking about in general as well. Do you think the scene's going like that now? What, like the clubbing scene? What, for both? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's been going in that direction for a little while. Mm. But that's because of the way that people look when they buy a bottle. Up, that's where it connects to, isn't it? Is, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get it. People want... It's more of the fact, oh, yeah, I'm getting a bottle. I'm getting a table. Do you know what I mean? It's that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, what it come, that's what I think. I believe it comes down to at the end of the day. So coming out of quarantine, what's the first step for you? What, what's, what, what are you planning to do? <sighs> Yeah, beach or something. No one knows when that is. No one, know, no one knows when that is, but <laughs> or something. Fly away and just, just want to, yeah, just get out there, bro. Just get out. Obviously, yeah, people say, don't you want to start working again and DJing again? Yeah, of course. Like, who doesn't? But you really think that DJing is ever going to be the same this year? Uh, personally, I don't. For the next year, at least. Like, you don't even know when big festivals are going to come back. Like, boy. I know festivals are coming back next year, without a doubt. Like, I think next year, nine times out of ten, everything will come back. I think overseas, I think overseas festivals, yes, next year. But I don't know about UK festivals. Mm, nah, I still think like, overseas definitely because I heard that Ibiza they're trying to get in a bit of the end of the season. This year, oh what? Is it festivals coming back this year? Not even this year, but just in general. I think. UK next year. I think UK next year probably won't. I don't know. I'll have to see what happens. Nah, you it think? Will. Yeah, yeah, it will. It but then we, we got to be aware of the second spike in case it happens, isn't it? Bro, that second spike is going to come. It could come. Have you seen how many people are out there right now? It could come tomorrow. It could come in the next <laughs> month. No one even knows. Get, get one speaker. Get your decks and plot, plot up at a local park. There's your show. Yeah, trust me. I can actually do it. I might have to start doing that, you know? Huh? <laughs> I said I might have to start doing that. Oh, there's a guy in Leytonstone. 
yeah, in East yeah. in late Tesco's. I don't. He, he's been set up. He's got uh, just outside the Tesco's. He's got his decks. He's got his speakers. Mm. Playing to people that are waiting in the queue, yeah, and he, yeah. he ain't playing like normal music, bro. He's playing Mark Bashman. <laughs> the <hustle. He's> playing, <laughs> uh, quite a joke. He's quite sick, to be fair. Mad. Well, bro, I really appreciate this talk, bro. Okay. I appreciate your time. Gonna see what's gonna see what's next from you. The next, well, whenever we come out of quarantine. For me, I'm definitely linking up with you when this is all over. Bro, definitely. You gotta invite me down to a set now. I gotta see what you got on the decks. I gotta see your skills. <laughs> I'm gonna take notes. <laughs> notes. I'll give you. I got a notepad somewhere here. I'll write them down beforehand. <laughs> bro, appreciate it though, man. Like, hope you're staying safe though. No, I'll try to, bro. I'll try to. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, take care man. We'll keep no, we'll touch base man, definitely. Yeah, of course. Alright, see ya. Bye.